Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. My name's Joe. We're out in the forest today. This is going to be a brand new series. This is the start of building a fort in the woods. A fort. Okay, so first order of business is obviously going to be shoveling down. This is winter time. Could you tell? There's lots of snow. Could you tell? The problem is building this, I want this to be a permanent shelter. I don't want to build it up on top of the snow and then the snow melt and then have everything kind of loosen up or fall through because um, it wouldn't be on the, the actual ground. Not, not this, the actual ground. So first order of business, it's going to be getting a snow removed. If you guys watched my last video, the one with Boosh, you'll, you'll understand how much snow there was. I'll just show you now. So there's not as much here as there was where Boosh and I were. She's up there, two, two and a half feet easy. So yeah, it's going to be some work getting this all down, but, but I do want it all gone. You know what I mean? That way I can be comfortable. I can walk around with no snowshoes. I'll have like a big, big spot dug out. I don't want to, like this is winter, right? There's a lot of snow. So if I prop logs up, it's not necessarily going to be like that in the spring. So I want to remove all that snow, like I said. I'm going to pile it on the sides probably. That way I can create a little bit of a, like walls. And then, then in the spring or summer, I'll revamp it when all that snow is gone, build some walls or whatever. But I think this is a good general spot. Let me show you why. So I've got a really nice sturdy spruce here, right? That is not going to come down anytime soon. And then uh, for my next side, I have a clump of cedar trees, uh, eastern white cedar. So what I'm going to do is probably get rid of this first one here. I'll use it for part of the building. And then tie off my ridge pole to this center one here. This guy here. That'll do two things. That's going to get me about a foot maybe two feet more room width wise I'm looking for about 10 feet uh, wide and then it's gonna give me one that's more straight up and down as opposed to leaning and I, I'll clear out all this stuff that's gonna be above my fire because the shelter the fort rather is going to face open that way the back will be leaning down this way I'll have this all open so getting rid of all this stuff is important and then, even better, right in front of the fort is this big open space. Look at this. Like definitely still closed in inside a forest, but I do have this big clearing right here. Right here. And this will be good for sunlight, for filming purposes. It'll be good for star watching at night. And uh, it's a good like landmark or whatever next to the big old clearing. I'll know my, my fort is there. So I'm pretty excited about this spot. On the other side, behind us, there's a bunch of yellow birch and maple uh, stand of those. So firewood will be readily available. And in here is all these spruce and balsam fir and cedar, which are easy to take down, very usable for shelter building. And um, yeah, th wrist thick, you know what I mean? The, the proper size, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about this spot. I think I need to get the little axe out and clear away a bunch of these branches because I don't want no pokies in the eye. Get out. There we go. A trusty little hatchet. And one more big plus is that there's no deadfall, no Widowmakers anywhere around. There's a small little cherry here that's broken at the top, but I can cut that down and use it for firewood or building material. So my hatchet will do good work on most of these twigs and get rid of them. But there is a couple things I do want to keep. I, I want to keep big um, nubs from the limbs, from the bigger limbs on, a few around so that I can hang my gear from it uh, if I want to. It's always nice to leave that option. You can take them off later on if you want to, but it's a good option to have. And then cutting it with the saw will leave it nice and clean for me and have it cut exactly where I want it. 
the length I want. Like here, for example. There, now we got a sturdy little holder, hanger, knob, whatever you'd like to call it. This is going on here. Yeah, much more sturdy. So, we'll keep doing that just a little bit around. Keep it up high for a couple. Like really, the back is going to be covered off. So I'll have a couple here, two or three good ones. Yeah, all right. Okay. Now we can use the fun tool. <laughs> Everybody knows it's the truth. Saws are efficient and easy good to use but the old hatchet nothing beats it eh? for the feels for the feels maybe I should uh, try to get away from the falling snow okay <laughs> that was anticlimactic Okay, well, so is this. I guess this is the next thing to come down now. This, uh, this cedar I gotta get down. <gasps> oh, that was in frame. Oh my gosh. Brisk. It's brisk, baby. Johnny? Johnny? I want to cut it low to the ground, obviously. I got to get down a bit. Yeah. Get, get down. Wow. Okay. All right. Hopefully, got enough room in there now. Tight fit in here. Can't get a full saw going. Come on. Getting a little snowy. Snowy Joey. Okay. She's hung up. She's about as hung up as they can get. As they can get. As they can get. It sucks when the snow is like this because it just punches through and then it's hard to get back up out. Yeah, no, I'm not moving that. All right, well, I can cut it up here. I'll try and cut it long enough where I still have a use for the length. So I'll cut it long.
probably under the snow about a foot and a half. So I figure if I cut it up here, there's plenty of room. I don't want to waste it either. I don't want to cut it too long, but right around here seems decent. I don't want this to break and hit me in the face, so I want to be careful now. And she's gumming up on me. Bet you if I pull, it'll break. Perfect. And the break wasn't bad enough to ruin any either part of the wood. She's long, eight feet or so. There's a fork up in the tree too, so that could be handy for something. Forks are always useful. Oh, she's bushy. She's very bushy. Snow Joe. Ah. Yeah, I'll be able to use that. We will use a lot of stuff on here, the limbs and the trunk itself. This looks much better, ready to dig. This is a good location. I'm about a half an hour drive from my house and about a 20 minute walk in through the woods. It's not bad at all. Temperature is pretty easy today. When I left home it was about negative seven Celsius. I think it's supposed to go up to negative one today. Very comfortable, no long johns, nothing covering my ears. The Stormy Cromer, it's pretty cool. I can tuck it down, cover my ears if I want to, but doing all this work and it not being very cold it's all good it's like a it's like a spring day out here all right so the plan is to dig out far enough probably out to here in a u shape come back and then I have all that dug out I'll push it to the sides and the front and then the back I'll dig out to probably maybe two or three feet back from the trees. Yeah. So right about here. Dig here. <laughs> it's gotta be a lot of digging. I better move my stuff that I need. I will end up burying my, uh, my ax in this log. Maybe I'll use this as a marker for the side. Far out as it has to go. Huh? Huh? All right. Might as well start. There's my marker for the bat. <laughs> oh. These little snow sho shovels are awesome, and I was really bummed out when I didn't have mine. Oh, yes, I got this new from Moose Jaw. Anyway, um, I was using, I did use my shovel from home one time, and it worked amazingly. The thing about these is they're light, they're easy to pack, but they, they're small. You know what I mean? Even though this is a 
pretty good shovel head on that one. They're smaller. Somebody suggested that I cut the other one and carry it with a smaller handle, but it's just so cumbersome, so big. Anyways, these are very handy. People have built a lot more than this with them. <coughs> Talking about cumbersome, these snowshoes, man. There's ice. I assume the ground is right after it. So many different types of snow in here. I'm layered in very granularly near the bottom. Gets the heart pumping. Oh man. <coughs> I had to take a breather here. Oh, the camera looks lopsided once again. It still looks lopsided. <laughs> We're making progress. We've got a good, I don't know, eight by 10 foot, six by 10 foot oval dug out. It's getting overheated. I'm thirsty. Parched. Parched even. So we're calling this a fort. You know what I mean? This is all we're doing anyways. Everyone you see out in the woods, on Instagram or YouTube is just playing around, just playing bushcraft, maybe practicing some skills, but in the long run, we're all just grown men, grown men playing bushcraft in the woods, building forts, making fires, eating hot dogs and top ramen, Mr. Noodle. <laughs> so let's call it what it is. I'm, uh, I'm going to use this place to have a base camp to camp at, to bring my family to, to maybe bring buddies to, to potentially build on to later on, to make videos here, to have a little backdrop for some outdoor videos where, I, where I'm not potentially going and, and exploring some new land and, and doing an overnighter there. So this will be a cool spot. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but obviously, things are going to change in the spring. Like the snow is up to two and a half feet here. Things will settle. Even if I get it all dug down and everything, things will settle. So it'll be like a little bit of changing, but that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. It'll give me more content. It'll give me more things to do. Oh, excuse me. It's quiet. I was looking for tracks. I didn't see anything. No deer tracks at all. A couple squirrel, not even any snowshoe hair. I'm going to try to do this uh, in a series, and I'm going to try to make them about a half an hour long each if I can. I'm so long-winded that it's hard sometimes. but uh, And then put them up in quick succession, maybe every two days, every three days or so. But, uh, yeah, we shall see. I just want these to be shorter videos. They're not overnights or anything like that. Shorter being a half an hour, which is still a decent amount of time. For those who do want the update, uh, I, do, I put a big post on Instagram and then I put a, a pinned comment in my last maybe two videos ago 
um, about Autumn and her hip dysplasia. I, for those who know what I'm talking about, um, it turns out she's fine. We, it was like not even a misdiagnosis. So we travel all the way down there. We, we'd be a lot like a week down there because we don't know what's going to go on or whatever. We we're in and out of the hospital in one hour. We saw the doctor, and this is exactly what these doctors do. This is this is their livelihood. They, they, they work on children and for like orthopedic stuff, right? Is orthopedic the right word? Bones and joints and stuff. So he takes her, he tries to manipulate her hips, and he says if her hips were popping in and out by this age, they'd be out already, and he couldn't get them out. He's like, she's fine. Sent us for x-rays and next door, came back, saw him in 20 minutes after getting those x-rays done. He's like, no, look at here. It's all good. I'm 100% positive that she's fine. He's like, what it could have been is some cartilage. Um, things grow quick when they're babies, whatever. Uh, he, he, but he was completely 100% positive that she's totally fine. And that is amazing. That's, it's such a relief. It's so very, very, very cool. My daughter's not going to delay in walking or have any um, osteoarthritis and things like that. So thank you all for the well wishes and prayers and thoughts and, and, and emails and messages and everything. Uh, it's really appreciated. Very much so. So she's a happy baby. We're all very happy about it. <laughs> okay. Better get back to shoveling. I hope today to get a ridge pole tied up or maybe a tarp up for temporary, temporarily. I won't keep the tarp up, uh, or maybe I will, but we, who knows. Right now I want it to be temporary. I'm not sure if I'll even get it up today or not, but we will keep digging and uh, clear up the spot, maybe have a little fire. I'm surprised I haven't come across something like this sooner. Digging down in here, this big hole, this is the only real obstacle that I've come across, so that's pretty good. Let's see if I can get it with the hatchet, if not I'll saw it out. As far as now is concerned, that's pretty much out of my way. I do want to make a bench back here to sit down on, lay down on, uh, and if this gets in my way, I will get rid of more of it, depending. Like, I think, I think I've dug out enough back here, I just got to straighten it out, to be honest with you. So I don't think that is going to be in the way any more than it is. And then come spring, I can just get rid of it easily. My, my, my thinking behind this is, I don't want to just rip it up and out of here because then it's going to disturb this wall of snow that I've kind of created behind me. So, yep, I think it'll be fine there. Crisis averted. All right, I'm just cleaning it up now. Now it actually is really in line with the back wall. So this tree's dead for sure. I'm gonna use it for building. You can see it's dead. It's not green inside. It's not wet or spruce piney. It's dead. It's a decent sized tree. So I'll be able to get a bunch of building materials out of it, plus some firewood. So just looking up and which way this needs to fall and everything, it's probably gonna get hung up. But the best way to go is right this way, towards this tree. This tree's dead too, so I can get rid of that. Um, this one I meant. And you, you, you can see that this is considerably bigger around than this one. And this is gonna take a lot more effort to saw up into pieces. I'm gonna be using this for my bench to get height up off the ground. That's why I want the big thick log so I can only use one one down two across and then I'll be good to go whereas if I had was going to be using a smaller one I might have to do more layers this will be sturdier in the long run as well because I want this to be a temp or an, a, per, a, bleh, a permanent shelter not a temporary one that's why I'm going with this and these this is solid like even breaking these twigs off when I was cutting them you saw earlier I was able to take twigs off easily these are like almost petrified. Obviously they're coming off easy too, just not as easy as the other ones. Wasn't a good example. <laughs> Anyways, let's get rid of this tree and fell the big one. 
lots of firewood. So this is balsam fir. And once it's dead, kind of like birch, it doesn't really have a long shelf life. Now the tree itself is nothing like birch. The birch rots from the inside and the bark holds it together. This whole thing just kind of goes to punk pretty good. But there's also a good stage where when it's dry and it's got a check in it, you can use it for a bow drill, good shavings, all that stuff. It's a short window. Short window, actually, right here. If you can see that. There you go. Now you can. See, very dry. Doesn't look punky at all. Okay. So I've cleaned up a lot of the twigs that were in the way on here. A lot of them, not all of them. So I want the tree to fall that way. So put the notch on this side and then I'll cut above the notch on this side. I'll start the notch with my saw and finish it up with the axe, I believe. Oh man. It's not that easy walking in these snowshoes, all of this tight quarters backing up and everything. So right there. start to make the wedge or the uh, the notch now it'll be it won't be a V it'll be a flat in and then a V on the top but that's okay Nice and cleaned up. I'll show you exactly what I want to do here. So you can see the notch is pretty clean. Goes in a little bit less than halfway. So what I'm going to do now, take my saw and go about an inch above the the point, the fulcrum point, if that's what it's called, on the back, about an inch up, and saw right through to about here, and it'll break and it'll leave a hinge. And it should, with any luck, fall right that away. Right to the left of my coat in between that broken tr tall standing tree. Blech. twigs on the top. Weak, 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 weak. That is not what I wanted to happen. literally by twigs.
Go. Go. Woo! Bonus. Okay, that's a decent piece of lumber. And get a lot of work done with that, man. Very cool. Very cool that it was dead, too. Let me show you my hinge. It didn't work out as good as I had hoped. But the tree's down without too much effort. So I made my back cut a little bit too high, I believe. But no big deal. She worked out. So now I gotta deal with this guy. Boop. Like I said, this is what I'm gonna make my heavy duty bed bench out of. Um, I want the pieces on the bottom roughly the same size. I'll show you exactly what's going on when I do it. But to measure, I'm gonna use my ax. So to there, I'll just cut a little guide. Then again, cut another guide. I need four pieces from here. So it's quite a bit of sawing, but it will be worth it in the long run. I'm not rushing anything. I can come back here and work on it at my leisure, but today we'll get these four pieces done for sure. Here we go. This is a good saw, you know what I mean? I've used it a lot, it's the same blade and uh, it's still going strong. The old Agoa Canyon Boreal 21. There are prettier saws, but this is the most fu high functioning, uh, efficient, compactable buck saw that I've seen. My arm could have just been pinching. I guess it was, I thought it was held up, but it could have been pinching. Okay, one down. And as you can see, that's a decent sized log in diameter. ways of doing this. I know which way I'm going to do, my preferred way, but I'll tell you both ways that you can do it. So first off is the way I like to do it. You take two on both sides, two there, two down there. You lay one or two smaller ones across on that, that way, and then you run your top, your bedding, like not your bedding, but your, your mattress, your top part, lengthways same way these are running that gives you a little bit of give depending on how thick the sticks are if they're live if they're not all that stuff it's really not the biggest deal in the world the other way to do it is just to use one right and then put two long ones going and then your top mattress whatever part have short ones running the same way as this boom 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 across I prefer the first way, so that's the way we're going to do it. I cut enough for that way as well. So, there's obviously four pieces here varying in, in thickness, so I'm going to adjust it all accordingly to, uh, to the ground and to its, its 
partner, the, the log partner, the log mate. I want these cleaned up so things sit flush. Okay, this is just rough. I'm just roughing it in now and we'll see what it really needs to be here in a second. I didn't dig the pit out as far as I thought I was going to. I think I'm gonna save that for the next day I'm here, but I do wanna get that bench built and get a tarp up here at least just to get a rough idea. Another thing I do have to remember is this ground again is like two and a half feet lower than the snow. So if I stand on that snow and tie it up, I have a super high ridge pole or ridge line, which I might like. Another thing I realized is I initially, I initially thought it was going to be that tree that I tied off to, but I think this one lines up better with this one. So I assume that's what I'll be doing. And then right now, I'll put a tarp up and just block it in and this, this wall will be my back. And then we can see where it goes from there. I don't know, I might want to leave that snow as my ground for now until it melts and prop up my, my back wall on that and have like, feel like I have much more uh, protection, like I'm down in something rather than my whole shelter being down in something, if that makes sense. Um, who knows, again, lots of options, lots of time, so. Uh, yeah, we'll get some long sticks cut now to put on the bench and then uh, yeah, continue making our bench and then get some food because I'm, I'm hungry. I think I'll take the two little bit longer ones for the bench from that downed spruce that I took as well. Nice big fat piece. are hard. take a lunch break from building so I need to go get myself some birch bark to start this fire. Looks like the snow is coming down too. already collected some really fine stuff from the top of that spruce and then some really dry stuff from the spruces and cedars I've been taking down and a platform platform is important I'm gonna push this fire uh, no I'm not I'm gonna have it right in the middle so I can actually sit on that bench once it's done and get a little bit of warmth from it later on the fire will need to go farther in front or not actually if the, if the bed's back there it could stay here the whole time there's just a nice good work area uh, in here anyways I probably uh, that's probably true I probably don't have to um, shovel any farther in front which is <laughs> which is good to realize <laughs> I'm done shoveling for today the old heart can't take it all right I'm joking I'm joking we'll get our good platform down It's a decent platform. I'll actually use these as a little prop 
Um, oh, I've got something new. I've got a firesteel.com fire steel, but it's square. It's a square fire steel, and I love the idea of this. Okay, so when you shave your fire steel or when you, you spark your fire steel, it creates divots, it creates grooves already. With a square one, all that's going to happen is it's going to become circular. You're going to knock the edges off, to the best of my knowledge. So I'll get a nice close-up here of uh, me using it. I got this from firesteel.com, the whole setup on this little necklace lanyard. It's got a magnesium rod, a scraper, and the square fire steel. It's pretty cool, pretty nifty. Thanks, guys, at uh, firesteel.com. They're always really good to me, those guys. And I, I always, I've been using their products for a really long time, like the whole time. Uh, and it's, we've had some back and forth with, within the past couple of years, and it's really nice. It's nice to actually be using gear and get um, the gear manufacturer, the gear maker, to understand that you actually use it, and they're, they're appreciative of it. It's a good, good relationship. Anyways. Good stuff, good stuff, uh, firesteel.com. So I'm going to spark my yellow birch. And then I'll put the soft, fuzzier kindling right on top. And then, uh, yeah, we've got lots and lots of twigs to go. Check it out. I've not even scraped it or anything yet. That's with the scraper that's provided. All on at once. Fire still goes away. Quick and easy fire. It's good because my gloves are soaked and my knees are too. together easily. Steam coming off of there. Oh yeah, bud. It's nice. It's nice to have a fire. So these are the first two pieces for my bed, the top part, the mattress part. I keep saying mattress, but it's just sticks. It's just logs. But you know what I mean, the top part of it. The part that I will be laying on, or putting something on to lay on. I need it cleaned up because I don't want to get poked and I don't want my sleeping pad, whatever else I might put on it to lay on, poked. chair. Oh man, feels nice to sit down. Well, it's somewhat sturdy. These are rolling. I can always tie them on or I can, uh, if the ground's thought, if the ground's not frozen because of all the insulation from the snow, I might be able to pound stakes in, but there's options. It's no big deal because I feel like I'm going to have to move it around after anyway, uh, depending on whether or not I continue to dig out the wall behind me or leave it there <coughs> excuse me the big thing is to have all the the materials here ready pre-cut pre-measured ready to go I can tweak it I'm not too concerned about that but 
it is time for lunch. I do have that salmon, like I said. It's pre-cooked. I, I cooked it last night for the family. This is just the leftovers. All I'm going to do is rewarm re it. And I have some chaga I'm going to make some tea out of. Oh, sounds good. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I've been out here since the morning. It's 1.30 now. I'm hungry. I had a granola bar. Old granola snack. Okay. This is coming along, man. I'm having fun too. I feel very comfortable here. This is a this is a good woods, good easily to get to to me. Not too far. I feel still like I'm out far enough. It is snowing, man. It's snowing right behind the camera, like in the opening, quite a bit. Okay. Well, maybe I'll tie my rid my tarp up. I'm gonna leave my tarp here. I'm gonna set it up and leave it here until I decide whether or not A, I leave it on permanently, I switch it out for a canvas tarp, uh, I, oh, canvas tarp was B, C, I uh, do all natural, who knows, but right now I'll leave it here, it's a white tarp, it's not gonna stand out by any means. I've been collecting chaga and drying it at home. For those who don't know, this is a fungus that grows on birch trees, yellow and white alike. It's a good anti-cancerous, all-around good health tea. You can crumble it up or use the chunks. I'm just gonna use a tea ball here with some chunks. I got powder in there as well. I'm gonna throw it in my water and put it to boil for a while. It's, you're supposed to do it just under boiling, but it's hard to regulate it here. I'm gonna sit it in there until I'm ready to eat. Cooking, doing it cooler for longer. It's supposed to preserve the, the properties, but we're out in the bush with one pot. All right, here we go. Here we go, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. It's getting very wet, it's a very wet rain. I mean, snow, it's a wet rain. Some wet water here out in the north. Silly Joe. Okay, let's go check that out. See what kind of room we have. Oh, these snowshoes, man. Camera, the camera is getting soaked, man. Like, is it picking it up? There it is. There she is. Like, I just showed you guys my backpack about five minutes ago. And that's what she looks like now. I am glad I got this tarp up. I need to get this uh, this camera underneath it. Oh yeah, we got some room. Some room, boys and girls. We're not done yet. It's a little lopsided, but that's all right for now. The whole mood changed. The whole mood of the day changed. It got dark. Dark and snowy. Not that I mind. Okay, well, I have to fix that now. Excuse me. Anyways, that's good for today. Do you, see, do you hear us and see the amount of snow coming down? Hear it? That's all the snow on the tarp. I'm, I've got coverage here. This is ugly. This is super ugly. i got to fix this up. You know what the problem is, is that... The trees are close enough together, or they're far enough of a, of a uh, trees are far enough apart where if I had a shorter uh, ridge line, then everything would be taut. 
The problem is the ridge line is long, so when I do the uh, taut line hitch, it, it creates like two two lines coming out, and I cannot pull the tarp tight enough. So I can I can remedy that again next time. It's no big deal. This is good. I'm glad I got the tarp up. I'm, I'm super glad I got the tarp up. My my camera's underneath it now. I got to get that salmon on that uh, those coals before they are just completely done. This salmon was super good last night. Hopefully it's intact. Oh, it's pretty intact. Look at that. That's not bad. That's not bad. If I can, I'm gonna peel this skin right off. That way I don't have to mess around. I can just eat it off the grill. Yes, yes. Yeah. Usually I like to take this little brown stuff off, but it's not that big a deal. All right, that's a good hunk of salmon. This chaga tea's gotta be almost done. We're done, oh my goodness, would you look at the snow? Holy smokes. It's no joke, guys. This is some snow, man. Like, no joke. Big old flakes. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that tarp looks ugly. Look at this. That's that's all gotta be restrung up. Yeah, I'll probably use a canvas tarp or something natural or different though for sure than that. That's ugly. Man, I can't believe the amount of snow coming down right now. Alright, I cannot wait any longer. This is as done as it's going to be. Oh, my snowshoes are just causing a ruckus. There we go. Chaga tea's got to be done too. Okay, that salmon smells heavenly. Flames in the back. Let's work. Oh. oh, danger. Almost lost the salmon. Almost lost the salmon. Okay, guys. Oh, my camera is white with snow. Okay, time to dig in. Mm. Oh yeah, I'll risk it. I gotta show you guys the, the color of this chaga tea. I got my oh, tea ball out of here anyway. There we go. Just to show you, can you see the color of it? It's like a dark yellow, white brownie color. I don't know why that was so important for me to show you. Ugh. Yes, yes. Mm. Oh, I have not tasted that in some time. I'm 
putting it right on the snow, breaking my own rule, but it's hot, 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 so that'll be all right. This is good. I'm enjoying myself out here by myself. Oh man. Well, this salmon's very good. Listen, I'm probably gonna wrap it up here. Um, I got I feel good about the progress I made here. a snowmobile somewhere anyway um, we got this pit dug out we got a bunch of firewood we got that huge tree felled we got a, a good good start to this bench I need maybe I don't know five more logs or something which I can probably get off of two trees depending on how tall they are um, we know that that white tarp in conjunction with that that rope, that ridge line is no good. That ridge line has to be shorter, or I need uh, probably a foot less long of a tarp, which I do have. It's fine. This is a ten by ten. I can put a nine by nine. I can put an eight by eight. I can put a all natural if I want to. But we found all this stuff out today. I chose the spot as well. In all honesty, it didn't take me very long. I hiked in about 20 minutes, looked at this spot, and looked at two other potential spots. But this one was the nicest because of the opening in the front. I do like that, that light advantage. I remember being in, back in Windsor in my little patch of woods and in the, uh, in the summertime, it would get very hard to film because it was so crowded with trees and leaves. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be much more building to come. This is just episode one. You guys have a good day. Be nice to someone. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Till the next one. Cheers. I got that tarp there now. I want to just drop it onto it, obviously. All right. This is a light tree. I would not have done that if it was a heavy tree. Excuse me.
another nice and dry dead one. I haven't had to cut any live for the shelter just to move the that one cedar. So far at least. old fork one I got earlier on in the day. I thought I could use it here, the forks to put my gloves on and put it over top of the fire. You know what I mean? I probably will still use that for that. I'll keep this one. Ah, these gloves get hard to put on and take off. They're all wet and your hands are cold. Okay. Looking like a bed. Looking like a bed. What's up now? Oh yes. Not too shabby, man. <clears throat> Those extra three poles made all the difference in the world and there is spring to it. It did, in all honesty, does have a slight slant down towards that side. So I'll put my head here. I can fix that again after, no big deal. Right, and I can put, well, I can afford to put probably three more logs on here to make it even wider. Oh, buddy. Shot, buddy. Oh, man. Feels good on the old back, I'll tell you that much. Oh. Farewell, my fort. Stop snowing. That was really crazy for a minute there. <laughs>